Hey, so we're gonna make some yummy cinnamon rolls. These are Christmassy cranberry pecan cinnamon rolls. I got a request to make these rolls and I wanna give a shout out to her. Her name is Ronnie Lee and I urge all of you, hi, Michelle, welcome. Um, I urge all of you to go look at her website. It's Ronnie Lee Gallery, R-O-N-I-L-E-E -E Gallery.com. And uh, she's the one that did my picture for Isn't Life So Yummy? Isn't Life Yummy? And uh, if you go on her gallery, you'll see my you'll see my picture there. She's an amazing artist and she's located in California. And I know when the price is right, she travels. Um, she's worth the money. So go check out Ronnie Lee Gallery. So Ronnie loves cranberries. She loves cinnamon rolls. She loves Christmas. So for her request, I am gonna make these cinnamon rolls. Okay, so if you look on my YouTube channel, um, Isn't Life Yummy, you will see the recipe for cranberry sauce, okay? And then after I'm done with this recipe, I'm gonna do a quick video on cinnamon pecans. So we've all um, had cinnamon nuts that are, usually you find them at the fairs. Um, I know I saw them at the stadium a lot of times when I would go to college football games. And they're really yummy. They, they're, they're turning the nuts over in this cinnamon sugar base. Well, I don't eat sugar and hopefully neither do you. And so I've learned how to make um, the cinnamon nut using powdered monk fruit. And it's absolutely divine. It's super easy. And so when I'm done with this video, I will make a video on this cinnamon nut. So you can use any nut you want to and make these beautiful cinnamon nuts. Put it in a bowl for maybe your Christmas open house that you're gonna have soon. And, uh, and you can go total ketogenic um, open house buffet. So let's get started on the cinnamon rolls because while they're baking, guess what? You get a bonus mentoring session. We're gonna chat about things, all things Christmas, okay? So I'm gonna bring you down and hopefully, I couldn't remember how to work my camera uh, thingy. So, okay, I think you can see my counter, okay. So we're gonna start off with measuring our mozzarella. So the recipe calls for 12 ounces of pre-shredded mozzarella. And I get my mozzarella at Costco. Now for this recipe, I'm using the already shredded. Um, I've, I've uh, skinned enough knuckles in my life that I really don't care to buy blocks of cheese that I have to shred. But if I have a man in the house, I can usually get somebody to shred my cheese for me. Okay, so 12 ounces is a cup and a half. And I've got a cup and a quarter, so I'm gonna do two of the quarter cup. There, okay, so we are going to microwave this mozzarella here and uh, get it nice and melted, okay? So I'm gonna stick that in the microwave. We're gonna stick it in for a minute and a half and then stir it and see if we need to do any more. Okay, so now on to the dry ingredients. Well, let me know which, let me tell you what I got in here. I've got my two large eggs and I've got my teaspoon of vanilla. And this is my liquid ingredients besides the coconut. And to my dry ingredients, I need a half a cup of coconut flour. In goes that. And to that, I need two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm using the large batter bowl from Pampered Chef and the teaspoon measurement from Pampered Chef as well. Not that I sell it, I just love it, so I use it. And then we're gonna use xanthan gum, okay? This is gonna give us our chewiness. And we're gonna use three quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum for this. If you 
don't have xanthan gum, I have heard that you can use tapioca, but I got xanthan gum, so we're gonna use it. Then to this, we're gonna do, in the dry, we're gonna use three tablespoons of powdered monk fruit. Okay, so how did I buy powdered monk fruit? I didn't. I bought the monk fruit granulated and stuck it in my blend tech till I got powdered sweetener. That's how I did it. Okay, so that is our powdered ingredients, okay? We're just gonna stir those up. Okay, now let's get that mozzarella out of there. And it looks good and melted. That's what it looks like. We're gonna stir it up a little bit. I'm gonna stick it in for, I don't know, it looks pretty good. Okay, so to this, we're gonna add our dry ingredients and our wet ingredients. But I'm gonna give this a quick stir so we don't cook our eggs, right? Okay, here we go. We're gonna stir up this dough. So this is a version of fat head dough. If you omit the sweetener and the vanilla, you can make some yummy uh, bagels as well, okay? Keep, keep going. This is hard work, but keep going at it, okay? The, uh, the cold eggs are stiffening up our cheese. Keep going, keep stirring until you get all that coconut flour incorporated into that cheese, okay? Get in there. Look at that. Ooh, it's just flying everywhere. Okay. Move this over. Now, I've got some parchment paper here, and I'm going to take some coconut oil, and I'm going to warm it up in my hand, and then I'm going to rub it on the parchment paper so that our dough does not stick, okay? And I'm gonna knead this for a little bit. Get that really good and incorporated. Good, I think you can see that clearly on the screen. And that coconut oil works really well. It's not sticking at all. It's sticking to my hands more than anything. Okay, that is good and incorporated. Mm, smells good too. Okay, so we're gonna start patting it out. I'm gonna get some more coconut oil on my hands, put it on the top, because I've got another parchment paper under here. And we're gonna spread the coconut oil, okay? And now, if you have a rolling pin, you're gonna roll this out. Now, those of you that follow me know I do not, I still don't have a rolling pin. You'd think all the times I go in the kitchen store, I would remember a rolling pin. But no. So, I'm going to use a kitchen hack. And I'm just going to rinse this real quick. And I'm going to use this. And you're just going to roll it out till it's super thin rectangle, okay? Yes, I know some of you are taking pity on me. We should send her a rolling pin. Well, that would be greatly appreciated. Because for some reason, my brain does not want to purchase a rolling pin. Okay, keep going. Get that really nice and thin, rolled out into a rectangle. I think you can see that under there. I'm getting there. Woo, slippery. It's kind of fun. 
I should have music playing in the background, but then maybe YouTube wouldn't show my video. So uh, you put on some Christmas music while you're watching me. Then that way my video gets shown. <laughs> there are always ways around it, right girls? Okay, so I am just folding and continually straightening up my rectangle. And it's that simple to do. Just fold it to get a straight edge and you get the thickness that you want. Oh, this is happening. This is doing good. I've got my oven preheated to 350. And these are gonna bake at 350 for about 30 minutes. Super, super simple. And I love this dough because you can make anything with this dough. Pull apart, cinnamon pull apart bread and yada, yada, yada. I mean, it, the list just goes on and on of what you can make. I'm kind of patching this up just a little bit. That xanthan gum is, you can see it really goes a long way in this dough. It's nice and springy. Okay, look, wow, look at that. Isn't that great without a rolling pin? Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. All righty, now I'm gonna get my hands all dirty again. Now that I just washed them. With some melted butter. One tablespoon of melted butter. I guess I can get my brush out, huh? So we're just gonna brush that all over the fat head bread, okay? Now this is yummy. So you've made your cranberry sauce. I made mine last night, okay? And I used a 12 ounce bag of cranberries. Just follow the recipe that's on my YouTube channel. And you're gonna add to that two thirds of a cup of the chopped cinnamon nuts, okay? So you've got your orange in there, you've got your cranberries, your powdered sweetener and your cinnamon nuts all chopped up. And I just took my knife and I roughly chopped the pecans. Um, I did the pecans in my video. I will also use pecans. So you're gonna take, you don't have to use the whole thing. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, but I want you to be able to put on as much as you want and spread it around so that it's nice and coated. And yep, even though it's a misshaped roll, I'm gonna spread it all over. And it's not really thick, um, the, the covering of it. It's not too thick, but I want it, because I don't want it to all ooze out when I roll it, okay? And then I've got a parchment lined baking pan here, baking something to bake in. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll this up and cut it. I'm just gonna use the parchment paper to get me started. And I'm gonna roll. Oh, this is so way cool! No guys, I have not made this before. This is my first time. I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna seal it. Okay. Then we're gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it in the half, and then half, and then half, and then half. Okay, so straight down, half, half, and then I'm gonna do these in thirds. Because that looks about right, doesn't it? Okay, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Wow, that is awesome. Okay, then just start putting them. Let's bring it over here. Putting them in my parchment lined baker. 
Oh, they look so yummy. They look so yummy. And I gotta kind of make them round again, you know. Then we're gonna make um, the cream cheese frosting to go on top of these. Okay. They look so good. You guys, these look really good. I'm so glad Ronnie Lee found this recipe and asked me to make them. Okay, so that one's a little dinky. I'm gonna take just a little bit. I know it's gonna just fall out the bottom, but I don't care. It just looks better. Okay, my hands. All right, fold this up. Wipe that off so it doesn't get on my sweater. All right, these are gonna go in the oven at 350, woohoo, for 30 minutes. Let's see if I can get that up there. Okay, so I'm gonna put them in the oven. Whoops. Always trick your oven. <laughs> you never know who put something in there then you didn't. So always check your oven. I got a cast iron skillet in there. All right, there we go. That can chill. All right, in they go. And that's going on for 30 minutes. Hold on one second. Okay, now let's get the, um, look at my hair today, crazy. Um, let's get the frosting done so that it's ready to go as well, okay? I've got a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, okay? And it calls for four ounces of, you know, half a block of cream cheese, but I'm doubling this recipe because I've got a lot of things to make that are gonna need this frosting. So I'm gonna double it, but it is four ounces of cream cheese, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, four tablespoons of your powdered sweetener, one, two, three, four, and then you can use a teaspoon of grated orange peel, or you can use one drop of orange sweet essential medicinal therapeutic oil, okay? This is from Butterfly Express Oils, butterflyexpress.shop. Um, super inexpensive and super wonderful essential oil, okay? So let me bring you down here a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Oh, let me straighten that out. Okay, I'm going to whip my cream first. stiff peak okay my whipped cream and now I'm going to this is my oil sugar uh, oil sweetener and cream cheese I guess the center is still a little warm, uh, cold it doesn't want to incorporate Okay, check that for sweetness. That's perfect. It's got a nice slight orange. 
um, to it. I like that. I'm going to add just a teeny bit more orange, I think. This is the big bottle, the four ounce bottle. And so it does not have a dropper on it. So you have to be really careful when using it. Okay. Whoop. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna add the whipped cream and we're gonna whirl this around one more time. And then we're gonna, that's gonna be ready for when they come out and they cool slightly. Okay, now, depending on how you like your icing, because usually we ice, um, let me bring you up here. Usually we ice cinnamon rolls, right? We don't frost them. Let me try it. Perfect. So if you like icing, then put a couple drops of water until it's in the consistency that you like your icing. Otherwise, you can frost it with a frosting knife or you can thin it out, stick it in a bag and, and pipe it over your sweet rolls. Okay. So a couple things that I want to talk about that I want to discuss um, is I saw this picture. Let me, um, let me pull it up. Um, I really liked this picture about Christmas. Okay. Christmas rules. Don't go into debt trying to show people how much you love them. Okay. Let's talk about that right there. Okay. I really had this problem. I really wanted to go into debt when my kids were little and I also wanted everyone to know how much I loved them. And I grew up in a home where things meant love. And so this is a big problem in the world. If you grow, grow up in a home where things are love, then you expect things in order to feel love. And I really want you to think about that. So if you're watching this and you're taking notes, I want you to take a note. Why do I need to spend money to show people I love them? What's a better way to show people I love them other than buying gifts, okay? Um, I have really worked hard on that because uh, when I was first married about 28 years ago, over 28 years ago, I, uh, I got married in our first Christmas. Um, we were thinking about things that we wanted to get each other. And, and my husband was like, well, I don't have the money for that. And I don't have the money for that. And I don't have the money for that. And I was getting really upset inside and my chest was getting tied. And I was like going, man, you really don't love me. And he looked at me and was like, what are you talking? about I don't love you and I go I can't believe you're not willing to buy me these things you don't love me and I went on this tirade for an hour probably okay that's probably exaggerating it was probably more like an hour and a half um I just went on and on and I almost I I had him that poor man in tears and I had him questioning if he really did love me but this was coming from a place of things were love and you showed love and you gave love by things. And, oh, God bless this man that married me because it took a long time for him to teach me that things are not love. Things are things. And like they say, you never saw a U-Haul following behind a hearse, right? Things are just things. But real love comes from the heart, it comes from our mouth, it comes from our actions, and it comes from our intention. And if our intention is pure, meaning, I'm going to show you love because I love you, with no expectation. So let's talk about expectations. The quickest way to get your feelings hurt is expectation, right? So when we have expectations, that is in here. And that is in here 
only. It is not out here, is it? No, it is nowhere to be found out here. It is only in here, in our head, in our thinking, and our expectations. So let me tell you something. We're driving to Orlando a couple week, weeks ago, and I just happened to see the, the mile per hour sign over there. And it said 50. And my mind, my eyes, of course, went right down there. And I looked at the speedometer on my car, who um, I was the passenger in, and it said 75. And I just had this anxiety attack inside of me. And I'm like, man, if he were just like some other man that just would take care of me and reassure me that things are okay and that he's gonna protect me, oh, I, I just calm down and I feel so much better. And I just kept having an anxiety attack, an anxiety attack. And then by the time we got to our destination, which was uh, not a place to, to, to arrive at, upset or stressed out, which I was. And my husband looked at me and goes, are you upset with me? And I said, no, I'm just really stressed out. That was a very stressful ride. Well, it took me a couple weeks and a couple more drives to that city because he took note and I said, I really wish you would make me feel like I was safe. And, uh, so we were coming home from Disney Tuesday night this week. And I said, I owe you an apology. I put an expectation on you and that's not fair. And expectations are the fastest way to misery, not happiness. I said, not once in almost 30 years that we've been together, have you ever put me in harm's way? We have never had an accident. We have never hit anything. And you have always kept me safe while we were driving. And I said, I'm really sorry that I expect you to keep me safe instead of me taking responsibility and saying, I am responsible for my safety and I am responsible for my happiness. And if I'm not trusting the Lord, because every time we get in the car, I go, Heavenly Father, Please keep us safe, guard our car with angels and guide us safely where we need to go. Make sure the tires work, make sure the engine works and keep everyone away from my car. Okay, so me having expectations that it's Steven's job to keep me safe is so irresponsible and lack of trust on my part in the prayer I just said when we got in the car. And yes, I am, I, I am stubborn. I'm not gonna cut myself down, but I do have a stubborn streak because I listen to opposition a lot who wants me to put expectations on my husband so that we don't have a great marriage. So anyways, I apologize Tuesday night. And okay, but just, just so you understand and give myself a break, my husband turns into a NASCAR driver, well, a Formula One driver because he treats the I-4 corridor from Tampa to Daytona Beach as a road course. And it is because there's so much construction and there's so many uh, people that have never been on this freeway before. It is known as the worst freeway in America because most of the people on there have never been on there before. And there's eternal construction on this road. So that being said, he still has never hurt, gotten me hurt, wounded, or in a car accident. So for that, I'm really grateful. But I did learn I need to be responsible for my own safety, my own happiness, and stop putting that expectation on him. Your husband is not there to make you happy. Your husband is there to complete your team so that together you can be warriors against the outside world opposition. And that is what marriage is for, is to huddle around each other and get through this life together as a team. You are not responsible for each other's happiness. You are only responsible for your own happiness. So let the expectation go that my husband's gonna buy me the greatest present this Christmas and he's gonna go into debt because guess what? You don't want that. You don't want that ever because he's gonna be miserable. You're gonna be miserable because expectation breeds misery, okay? Next one, let's go on to this Christmas rules. Don't go visit your family if it compromises your mental health. 
Okay, no more guilt trips for moms out there if your kids aren't coming home for Christmas. I don't want you manipulating them. I don't want you crying. I have a daughter that's 6,000 miles away from me and it's killing me that uh, I don't get to see her for Christmas, but I am never gonna let her know how upset I am that I can't see her for Christmas because that's not fair. Okay, yeah, she's probably gonna watch this and she'll see. However, I am never going to put that burden on my children to make me happy because they're here with me. I've got a daughter and two granddaughters and and her partner and I, this is gonna be our first Christmas, our first ever Christmas with not having our grandbabies here with us. What a burden to place onto somebody just for your happiness. Stop it, stop it now. And then if you're having anxiety about going to your family's house for Christmas instead of staying at home and having your own little Christmas. Okay, remember that Bible verse, a man shall leave his mother and a daughter shall leave her parents and together they cleave together. Okay, so just say we're living the biblical Christmas this year. We're cleaving unto each other and none else. And don't live in guilt. Guilt and shame are the two lowest frequencies on this earth. And why do we want that to interfere with Christmas? One of the most spiritually uplifting, joyful times in our life, right? So no guilt, no shame. And whoever comes through that door is the greatest thing ever. Celebrate them, be grateful that they came, and, and enjoy yourself right? That's what it really is about. This time of season is, that's right, Michelle. Absolutely. Love those who come into your home, celebrate them, and let them see that your joy is full because they came into your life. Okay? Perfect. Last rule. If someone comments on your weight, eat them. Zero guilt and shame about what you serve, what you eat from Thanksgiving to January 3rd, okay? Those are the holidays. And I should say January 8th because you do have the championship college football game. Now, this is coming from a YouTube channel all based on the ketogenic diet. However, if you are choosing a feast period instead of a feast day, just do it with love and happiness and don't put your body image into the holidays. Folk, you, okay, Trish Taylor 101. Everybody knows what is the most famous thing Trish Taylor ever says. You get what you focus on. You get what you focus on. You get what you focus on. So if you're gonna focus on, oh, I'm gonna put this crap in my body and I'm gonna get fat, then guess what? That's what you're gonna do. So eat with joy, eat with celebration. And if somebody makes a comment about something you're putting in, their, in your mouth, say your next buddy, I'm getting a bigger fork out to fork you, okay? So fork you. This is not about our weight. This is not about our image. This is about Christ's birth, Christ's birthday, and who's ever been to a sucky birthday party? I hate them. So make sure this birthday party this year is a season of fabulous celebration and a celebration of love, a celebration of coming together. I also wanna talk about depression. This can be a really hard time of year for those suffering from depression because of expectation. Okay, expectation, I think, is one of the worst wiles of the devil. So for those of you that suffer with depression, stop expecting the worst. Just say, Christmas is coming. It is what it is. It will be here. And I give myself permission to. And then think about what you're going to give yourself permission to. Two, I'm gonna give myself permission to stay in bed all day. I'm gonna give myself permission to stay in bed all day with food on this side of me and food on this side of me and a big, huge screen TV in front of me. And I'm gonna celebrate Christmas the way I wanna celebrate Christmas. This Christmas, I give myself permission to go for a drive. 
Uh, I give myself permission to stay home by myself. This Christmas, I give myself permission to go and be with people who I feel safe around. This Christmas, I give myself permission to let someone know how I'm feeling, how I'm in despair, how I am fearing. And this Christmas, I'm going to celebrate me taking a step forward to come out of depression. It is so important that we keep moving forward, even if it's a millimeter at a time. Living one day at a time is so important with those who suffer from depression. One last thing on expectation. I want to talk about our, our partners, our partners in crime. I want you to give your partner this year for Christmas unconditional love. I do not want you to judge them where you're at. I do not want you to judge them from where you're at. I do not want you to love them from where you're at. I want you to love them for where they are at. That is one of the best Christmas presents you could give your partner, your spouse, your roommate, the best Christmas ever, by loving them from where they are, not where you expect them to be. That word expectation again. I, I want you to know that Christmas is so full of anxiety. It's so full of expectation. It's so full of shopping, shopping, shopping things, 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 that it is a mind-blowing transformation when you can say, I'm not spending a dime this Christmas. I'm just going to show my love. And that is really hard to do because you question because we so put our heart on things. But when you give of yourself and you serve other people from your heart, you will capture the real spirit of Christmas. And I'm gonna do that this year in, in my cooking. I do it every year through my cooking. My kids get up in the morning and they know I'm gonna have the most amazing breakfast spread for them. And, and that's how I serve my family. And then they're gonna open presents and they're gonna open their stockings and they're gonna laugh and they're gonna have fun and enjoy each other's company and while I'm in the kitchen making Christmas dinner for them. And that's how I serve my family. And I don't do it with expectation. I do it because I love them so much. And I really look forward to being able to do that. And I hope that you will sit down and ask yourself, what can I do to show my family how much I love and appreciate them this Christmas that doesn't cost money. Yeah, groceries cost money, but you know, we got to eat anyway. So that I take that out of the equation. But tell me some of the ideas that you come up with because as we support one another, we build the energy around this kind of movement. The movement of sharing our hearts with each other, loving each other, and an outpouring of giving and service. And that's what I want to create in my life. And I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas. And Happy Hanukkah. I think tonight is night five. And uh, let's see how much time is left on the oven. Oh, wow. I really did talk a long time. We've got eight minutes left. Hold on a second. Let me check. Oh, they are looking so good. They're almost done. So what else do we need to talk about? Um, if you have questions for me, let me know. Shoot them up there on the screen. What are we doing for Christmas this year? Hopefully it's going to be warm enough that uh, we can go to the beach. Uh, when I was a young girl, we opened our presents and then we went and played at the beach. What are you going to be doing on Christmas Day? Um, try something new maybe. Um, of course, we always go to the movies. That's a big deal in our house. Our kids love the movies. And so uh, Christmas Day, we will probably go see Mary Poppins. 
um, or the Nutcracker. I still haven't seen the Nutcracker. If you've seen the Nutcracker, let me know how it is. Um, and let's see, what else will we be doing? Uh, probably not much. I stopped watching football because of the political. I'm not a political person anymore. I gave up politics for happiness and I've, I've never looked back. So I don't watch the NFL anymore because it went political. So uh, probably not much TV. We don't really, well, we own TVs, but we don't have TV in our house, right? We don't have cable. So um, probably movies and the beach and enjoying each other's company and eating some cranberry cinnamon rolls. Talking to my mom, talking to my mother-in-law. Um, hopefully she's home from the rehab hospital. She's in the rehab hospital right now. She broke her back. And uh, they said she's gaining strength and she's doing well. And uh, so thank heaven for that. What else? Do we, uh, anybody have anxiety during the holidays, uh, get stressed out? You know what? Go get a massage. Ask somebody to get you a massage for Christmas. That's a nice service uh, gift. And a lot of massage places have gift certificates and they even have specials for Christmas um, to get you to come in and give gift certificates. Give somebody a massage. And uh, that's that's a good way to, to be chill during the holiday. Um, take a bubble bath, go get some bath bombs. Um, Oh, I saw the coolest stuff at the Grand Floridian. Um, they have uh, soap, uh, loaves of soap, and it's got little hidden Mickeys all through the soap, and you just slice the soap. Now, that would be cool to, to come up with a recipe to create something like that, but go buy yourself some really nice uh, bath stuff and maybe take some baths during the Christmas season. Um, to keep you calm, keep you relaxed, and uh, and chill. Let's bring the best energy we can to the holiday season. Okay, let's check these uh, these muffins, these rolls. Mm. They are gonna take a bit longer. So I'm going to post a picture of them in my comments and I will post the recipe in my comments. But I wanna thank you all for, Michelle, thank you so much. I just love you and adore you. And I love you all and I'm thankful that you joined me for so long. And uh, I will take pictures of these cranberry cinnamon rolls and I hope you love them. And if you do, tell everybody to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Is It Life Yummy? And I hope you have a merry, merry Christmas. And I will see you in the next video where we do the cinnamon pecans. And again, you can use any nut you want, okay? I'll talk to you soon.